What is up guys? Coinstar1337. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to purchase and acquire Litecoin. Now, this video is not for those who already know how to do this. If this video is for those new to the space, they wonder, how do I buy these Litecoins? You know, I've met people who know how to buy Bitcoin, but don't know how to buy Litecoin. And I've met people who don't know how to buy either. So that's what this video is for. It's for those newcomers out there. I want to teach you and show you all the different methods on how to acquire these Litecoins and also go over the pros and cons of each method. Also, before we get started, for those first new timers out there, I highly recommend that you set up a secure Litecoin wallet first. I recommend either a paper Litecoin wallet or going to litecoin.org and downloading the Litecoin client. I also recommend that you purchase a small amount. Send it around to your wallet, to other wallets, maybe even purchase a few small items with your Litecoins and get a feel for how the Litecoin network works. And I say this because Litecoin is decentralized and there's no head office or customer service you can call if you make a mistake. So if you mess up and you send your Litecoins to the wrong address or you somehow or another didn't store your Litecoins properly and you don't have access to your funds, if you make a mistake like that, there's no one you can call to get your coins back. Once your Litecoins are sent, that transaction is final. So it's best to get a feel for how it works with a small amount. That way if you mess up, you're not losing thousands of dollars, okay? You're just losing maybe 20 bucks. Now, let's get started. First, we're gonna go into what these different methods are, and then I'll go back and go through some of the pros and the cons of each. So go ahead, get, uh, get your popcorn ready. I got my coffee right here, and let's get started. So method number one is using a flagship exchange. Right here I got Coinbase pulled up. Uh, another one is Kraken, another one is Bitstamp. And you can sign up for an account and purchase your Litecoins through one of these. Another method is using an altcoin exchange. For instance, shapeshift.io. By the way, I highly recommend these guys here. You've got Cryptopia. There's other ones out there like Bittrex. Uh, so forth and so on. Another method is using a Litecoin ATM. It's a machine you go to, you put cash in, and you get Litecoins out. And I will leave a link to the to this website here and to this website here where you can find local Litecoin ATMs in your area. And you just look on the map, figure out where they are. And the same way up here, you click on the map, figure out where the Litecoin ATM is and it gives you the information. Another method on how to buy Litecoins is using local Bitcoins. You can meet up with people locally and buy Bitcoins and then you can use Shapeshift to convert those into Litecoins. The next method is to actually sell goods or services for Litecoins directly and you can use a service like this. Sell your goods for Litecoins here you can even sell things like property, expensive cars for Bitcoin on a site like this. Or on a site like this, you can sell your things and convert those into Litecoins uh, later on. So those are all the methods of how you can acquire these Litecoins. Now I'm going to go into the pros and cons of each. And we're going to get started with those right now. Let me take another sip. All right, so the pros and cons of using a flagship exchange like Coinbase. Some of the pros are you get instant exchange at current market rates. These exchanges are what make the market rates. So if you use one of these, you're getting the best rate possible for your Litecoins, for the most part. And then another pro is you can deposit funds right from your bank account. Moving on to the cons, you may need to be 18. You know, many bank accounts, you have to be 18 to sign up for one. So if you're under the age of 18, you know, I've got family members, you know, who are young kids, not young kids, but you know, they're in high school, they want to get some Litecoins. This may not be for them. You need to have an account. 
So if you don't want to give out your email address, then these methods are not for you. Also, some of these require an ID verification. Some exchanges have buy and sell limits. And also, there's the possibility that the exchange itself could be hacked. And if the exchange is hacked, the hackers could send and receive Litecoins, and they will send all the Litecoins from the exchange to their controlled address, and now they're the ones who have the coins and not the exchange. So you could lose your coins if you keep them in here for a long term. Now let's move on to the pros and cons of an altcoin exchange. Hold a second. Some pros. You get an exchange at market rates. So whatever the market rate is, you'll get that exchange rate. Using the, an exchange like Shapeshift, you don't have to worry about this being hacked because the coins never touch the exchange. They come directly from one wallet to another. And you can select any coin. For instance, let's say you have Dogecoin. You can convert those into Litecoin. And vice versa. You can just select and receive whatever coin that you choose. Um, you also don't need to have an account. Meaning you don't need to be 18 in order to use this service. Now there are other altcoin exchanges. For instance, Cryptopia, you would need to have an account. But this one in particular, you don't need to be 18. A con of using an altcoin exchange would be, you know, you had to sign up for an account. Some altcoin exchanges need ID verification, and some altcoin exchanges have trade and withdrawal limits. There is also the possibility that if the exchange is hacked, those coins could be lost. All right, now let's move on to ATMs. What are the pros and cons of using a Litecoin ATM? Some of the pros are you get instant exchange. You put the cash in you get the cash out. Some ATMs don't require you to have an ID, which means any age can use it. Um, some don't have any buy or sell limits, so you can buy as many as you want. And you don't have to worry about losing coins due to a hack, because as soon as you put your money in, your coins come straight out. Some of the cons are different ATMs have different rules, so you may go to an ATM here, and the ATM rules will be different than over here. Some ATMs have higher percentage markups. For instance, I've seen ATMs anywhere between 10 to 20 percent higher than the current market rate. Some ATMs require photo ID, phone numbers, and even fingerprints. So depending on where you are, those could be uh, some limits and some exchanges do actually have hard limits on how much you can buy and sell. By the way, I'll be leaving the links if you want to find the ATM near you in the description down below. Now let's get into local bitcoins. What are the pros and cons of using a site like this? Some of the pros is you get an instant exchange. Some traders don't require an ID and there's no limits. You can trade with as many people as you can find. Local Bitcoins, however, is you're dealing with individuals. Each individual may have different terms, so you'd have to click on their individual trade and see what their terms are. This, this is their terms there. These are these guys' terms here. And you'd have to find somebody who agrees with your terms, and you'd open a trade. You can meet up with people locally, or you can trade with people over the internet. But you have to watch out for scammers. That's one thing to look out for. There are scammers on sites like this. You also may have to meet up with someone in person, which you would have to make sure you go to a well-lit public area, you know. There are some traders on here that do require ID and phone verification before you can trade. And there are some traders on here that may have higher percentage markups than you wish to pay. All in all, local Bitcoins, if you find the right trader, this can be a godsend because if you can find some traders that don't require ID and don't have any limits, you can buy as many and sell as many uh, Bitcoins as you want and you can easily convert those into Litecoin using this exchange here with no account needed and you can have your Litecoins. Now let's go into the pros and cons of buying and selling your stuff directly. Some of the obvious pros are you can get rid of stuff that you already have. 
you don't have to worry about having and depending on the site you may not need an ID also if you have a business an online shop you can just start accepting Litecoins right away and you can get paid in Litecoins right away some cons are you must have something to sell if you have your own online shop and you're dealing on tight profit margins Litecoin the price volatility may not work for your business and getting sales can also be a challenge so those are some of the pros and cons of buying and selling your things directly for Litecoin so guys there you have it hopefully I've gone in depth showing all the different ways to acquire Litecoins some of these require you to have an account you must be 18 and some of these if you're a little bit creative you can buy Litecoins no matter what age and without having to have an ID so guys that's been it this has been Coinstar1337 be sure to follow my Steemit page in the description down below I will be doing a giveaway on there so links and everything for that is in the description also links for all of these sites and methods that I discussed will also be in the description down below so you don't have to google none of this you can just click on the link and go right to it that's going to conclude this video be sure to leave a like be sure to leave a comment and subscribe again I'm Coinstar1337 and I'm out